All right, hi guys. So I'm Chef Gloria, and um, I am a chef and a dietitian, and I would like to show you how to make a quick meal for um, just a weeknight. I just got off of work myself. <laughs> I work as a supervisor at a school district, nutrition supervisor, pretty fitting. So I just wanted to get a meal that was really quick, and I'm sure you guys can relate. You got a lot to do, you got a lot on your plate. I still have stuff I have to get done tonight. So I'm going to try to knock dinner out really quickly. So what we're making today is Thai basil, 15 minute Thai basil chicken. So I have my recipe in front of me. Um, and so the main thing that you want to do that's really important is just read through your ingredients, first of all. So uh, if you want to pull up the recipe with me, or if you don't have it, just write down what I'm saying. <laughs> and we can go from there. Uh, so you want to just gather your ingredients. So I have all my ingredients kind of gathered here in front of me, and you'll see it in a bit. Um, so we want two tablespoons of vegetable oil three tablespoons of oyster sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce. So I'm just gonna check and make sure I have everything. So we have our, we have our oyster sauce, we have our vegetable oil, we have our soy sauce, we have our fish sauce, lots of sauce today. Uh, we have sugar back there, I'm gonna grab it when we need it. Um, we have a bell pepper, it's red, we're gonna chop it. Uh, we have eight ounces of green beans, so those guys are right here. Um, we have one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs, coarsely chopped. So these are not chopped yet, so we're going to do that. And so anytime it has directions in the recipe, that, so it says chopped, you want to make sure and do that before you start cooking. Um, and so I haven't done any prep just to show you guys kind of accurately how um, long it takes. So then um, we want four sliced shallots. So this is what a shallot looks like. It's kind of like an onion and garlic mixed. It's really tasty. Uh, we, want, we also have garlic. So four cloves of garlic minced. And then four minced Thai chilies. Four to taste. And I like spicy, so we got six of them. And let's see. And then a cup of very thinly sliced fresh Thai basil leaves. So I'm going to get my... Uh, measuring cups out because I don't really use them but I know that not everybody has been to culinary school so some people need to measure sometimes I need to measure too especially when I'm baking it's really important to get all the uh, reactions going right and baking um, the batter the mix of what you're making so the last thing we need is jasmine rice and that's to go with it so we're gonna start with the rice first just so that's cooking while we're cooking and so I have a rice cooker, but I'm gonna make it just uh, from scratch <laughs> or it's like the old fashioned way in case anybody does not have a rice cooker. So as far as supplies, I just have a chef's knife. So um, this is a Wustoff, it's really awesome, but just any chef's knife will do, just make sure it's nice and sharp and that you're very careful when you're using it. So I'm gonna make, um, let's see, how much rice? Pot over here. So I'm just going to cook, let's see, let's do, um, let's do a cup of rice, or no, I'm going to do, I'll do two cups of rice. So you always want to have double water for your rice. So I'm going to heat up the water first. So I'm going to go over to the sink and get four cups of water. And if you'd like, you can use brown rice or quinoa. Those are really healthy options. But white rice is fine too, as long as it's just, you know, in moderation or like according to taste, whatever you like best. Okay, so I'm going to put the lid on because it heats faster that way. Okay, so we're going to let that water heat up while we do some prep. So if you have your ingredients, I think we're ready to go. So what we're going to do is go ahead and prep all the ingredients as they're listed or as they're described in the ingredients on the recipe. So it says we need to chop the red bell pepper and usually the ingredients in the recipe are listed in the order that you add them. So just keep that in mind. Um, all my produce is washed, so just make sure that your produce is washed for safety. So for a bell pepper, this is the way I like to cut it. There are different ways to cut it, but I usually like cut it in half. And then I have 
take the seeds out. And little seeds aren't too bad, but just for like the optics of the dish, making sure it looks good and just looks a little neater, but the seeds are fine if they're in there. I usually knock it against my hand to get the seeds out. And then take this other guy out. And I actually have chickens and they love bell peppers and bell pepper seeds. So this is a treat for them later. So I'm gonna save it. If you don't have chickens, you can just toss them or plant them because they do grow if you plant them in the garden. Yeah, or put them in your compost heap, <laughs> which I also have. Not trying to be all, you know, super trendy, but I do have one. <laughs> Chickens, or compost heap. What else do I have? Like, are we live from Portland? I wasn't aware. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Portland, San Diego. <laughs> it's a new place. So, let's see. So it says, we just want it chopped, so I'm going to julienne it. If there are any like little strange looking pieces, just go ahead and cut them out. Always make sure you're cutting away from your hand and that you know where your knife is at all times. So uh, I'm gonna cut these in half like this and then kind of hold it on its side and julienne it like this into thin strips. But you can also dice it and that just means cut it into squares. Uh, you can slice it a different way. Uh, and so you see when I'm using the knife, I'm just kind of curling my fingers under so the knife should move like this next to your hand. Not completely touching it, but just in front of it so it's always following. You never want to have your fingers out like this, holding something because that would be bad. Yeah, what happened with you and mushrooms that one time? <laughs> oh yes, I have this mushroom story. I'll save that for the, uh, we'll put that link in the bio <laughs> for the after party. But yeah, had a near miss with some mushrooms. It was touch and go for a while. It was touch and go, yeah, but you know what? I made it. I'm here today, standing in front of you, so. <laughs> Somehow, by yeah. the grace of God. Oh, make sure to check for stickers. I didn't do that. So it's washed, but not de-stickered. And it won't, these are designed not to kill you if you eat them, but they just don't taste very good and they don't look great if you're serving the dish to someone else. This is probably a great dish for date night, actually, because it's nice and quick, but it looks fancy, like you spent hours on it. So, you know, you never know when you're going to need to pull a dish like this out of your uh, repertoire and impress somebody. And this dish, let me see, I think it serves four people. So it's yourself then you'll have leftovers and if you have a roommate then you'll each have one set of leftovers and it's only 25 dollars actually yeah and we only spent about 25 dollars so that's if you think about it, it's four meals for 25 dollars or four servings i'm gonna get a bowl to put all my prep stuff in And it's always a good idea to read through the recipe too to make sure that something doesn't have to like marinate for hours or, or like a lot of things that trip me up or baking like cookies it says chill the dough overnight or chill the dough for an hour and I'm like no I want cookies tonight <laughs> so you don't get cookies the same night if you don't read the directions um so let's see our green beans are good uh, what I usually do is just so they have a little thing on them here little end. I usually, you can just kind of snip it off with your fingers. And then the other end is just kind of a little string. So if you don't want that, then that's fine, but they, it tastes fine. So this one is a little hard to chew though, the stem. But if you want to do a bunch of them together, then you can just line them up. I usually just line them up by the tops because I only cut off the tops. So just kind of arrange them in order. And then chop them off in a bundle like this and then just toss that part away. I think my chickens like that too so it's a treat for them. If you want them smaller, I usually like to have everything that is in the dish the same size. So I think I'm going to cut these in half just so that they kind of match the size so that when you get your forkfuls then that works. And so I'm just going to start snipping these off 
one at a time because that's what I'm used to, but feel free to, during this time, just gather them up and chop them off if you'd like. And I realize I'm going a little bit fast, so if you um, are falling behind or anything, just don't worry, just try to, um, this will be recorded to watch later. So if you are uh, tripped up on something, then uh, you can go back and refer to it. Try to take my time on this part in case anybody is behind so they can catch up. Um, it also, I think it took me like five or 10 minutes to gather all my ingredients just to make sure that I had them. Um, shopping takes a little bit longer. So just depends on how familiar you are with your grocery store. So just um, make sure that you keep that in mind too when you're planning for prep time. So I don't know if you can go to the store on the way home and then just cook then, or if you want to shop the night before, everything still should be, or should still be fresh for when you want to make dinner. So uh, some of these beans have a little string that's coming off of them. So I'll try to show you another one. Let's see. Mike, where can I put my phone? That's there you go. So see, there's a string that comes off. You can peel that off, but you can also eat that too. Um, just if it, I usually just kind of snip off the top with my finger. Um, works better if you have a little bit of a fingernail. Make sure your hands are clean as well. And if you're, this recipe isn't too messy, but if you're wearing any jewelry that you don't want to get dirty, make sure you take that off. Um, so we're going to cut these in half again, like I said before. And so you can cut them just straight, like I cut the other ones. Or you can cut them on a bias. And that's just cutting them kind of sideways, like on a diagonal, basically, to make it a little bit fancier. So you kind of want to face them all the same way. And then shuffle them a little bit so that they cut, so that they're at the same size still. So like short end here, long end here. And then cut them like this. So it just gives it a little bit more of a fancy edge. But you don't need to be fancy like that. If you're hungry, let's just get this food done. So I'm just gonna chop these in half because I am hungry. And you can have separate prep bowls, but I just like to put everything together. And once again, you can read ahead and see how everything needs to be prepped and then portion it out that way, separate it out that way. Because some stuff needs to be cooked before other things. Uh, so I'm gonna start these shallots. They're like onions. So you just want to cut the end off, the end that looks kind of frizzy like this. Um, and then there's another very papery, pointy end that looks like this. So it's just basically the top and then the little um, frizzy part is the bottom. So go ahead and chop both of those off. And Sometimes they don't really um, specify what size of produce you need and if produce tends to vary. So these are very big shallots. So I'm actually gonna just cut two of them, like slice two of them, see how that turns out. Um, because normally shallots that I've seen are like half this size. And it also depends on the flavor of what you'd like and everything. Um, so, if you're ever in doubt, just make it according to the recipe, and then if it's too much or too little, just adjust next time. Can you say what's the difference between uh, shallots and onions? So a shallot is a little bit sweeter than an onion, and it is basically, um, like I said before, kind of a cross between an onion and garlic. So onions and garlic are pretty closely related, but this um, shallots go really well with dishes that are uh, I want to say fancier, that have wine in them, um, red or white. Uh, so like beef dishes, they complement the flavor really well and just add a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of extra flavor. So it is, I like using them because it's like having um, onion and garlic together. And this one obviously has extra garlic, which I love because as I've heard people say before, you measure this with your heart. <laughs> Um, because I, look, I just love garlic, I use way too much. Um, and so, <laughs> let's see, so the, 
papery skin. I did not peel that very well. What I should have done is cut it in half like this. Oops, I'll show you what it was here. So you see how there are two little bulbs here? This is one shallot, but it's kind of like the garlic where it's got multiple bulbs. So um, what you want to do, I'll show you this one. It's a little bit more in uh, uniform. So you can cut it in half like this. And then it's easier to peel that way because you just peel one side off and then it comes off a little bit easier. Beautiful. So these are just going to be sliced, which is really easy. So I would recommend slicing them a little bit thinly because it doesn't say. So we just want to go ahead and see this papery part is keeping it together. So I'm going to try to chop that off and then the skin will come off easier. So I'm just gonna slice them this way. Uh, so against the grain, which means that you're uh, cutting into the membrane. And so if you slice it with the grain, it's this way, and it's kind of along the same lines that it grows. So you don't expose as much flavor. So if you cut it against the grain, which means you cross as many layers as possible, uh, you'll hear that with meat and stuff, um, then it'll be a lot more flavorful because it opens up more of the cells of the vegetable. So we're slicing. And then if there's a little part on the top that gets slippery, just go ahead and peel that off. Save it for later. And once again, make sure your knife is really sharp because it'll make the slicing easier. So again, I'm deciding to, since my shallots are so big, deciding to reduce the number of them. So I'm just doing two. So it'll be plenty, I'm sure. And you know, I'm going to check on my water because I think my water is boiling for my rice. So you want it to a rolling boil. Let's see if I can show it to you. I'll come to you. Okay. So see how it's boiling? really well, really hard. So then I put four cups of water in there, so I'm going to put two cups of rice. It already smells amazing in here, by the way. <laughs> Just from the shallot. So then I personally like to use a spatula because I feel like it's a very universal tool. So pancake spatula and there's a rubber spatula. Usually you'll see this referred to as a rubber spatula, not the flat pancake spatula that you flip pancakes with. So you want to make sure after you put your rice in there that you give it a stir. Otherwise it'll cook all clumpy and not be very good. So then I'm going to, some people cook their rice with the lid off or people put salt in there or just, you know, butter. You can do whatever family rice trick you do. Um, I'm just gonna leave mine plain because I feel like there's gonna be a lot of flavor in this sauce, so it should be fine. And then um, I don't put any oil or anything because I like it a little bit sticky. But if you like your rice a little bit more loose, you can definitely put some oil in the water. And then some people cook their rice uncovered, but I prefer to cook it covered. And then you're gonna lower the heat all the way down. So my heat to heat the water was on full blast. And then this is a, a simmer. So it should just be bubbling a little bit like that, if you can see. The water should just be moving a little bit. Little bubbles coming to the surface every now and then. And I'm actually, my stove is pretty powerful, so I'm gonna turn it down almost all the way so that I can, because uh, it, it overflows sometimes, <laughs> it boils over. <laughs> and that's never fun, so. And we're using, we're using jasmine rice for this recipe. Yes. What? What other rice is common uh, that maybe we shouldn't use, or, or what's the differences between the rices? Okay, so there's, uh, like there's basmati rice, which is uh, pretty similar. Also, in a lot of, it's used in a lot of Asian dishes. And so the jasmine rice kind of has like a nice scent to it. Basmati rice is a little bit less aromatic. Um, and so there are other types of rice that you should not use, like arborio rice, which is a short, 
grain and it's a little stickier and it's used for risotto. And so it's, it's very starchy and you definitely don't want to use that type because it will make your, I don't know, it's just a very gummy rice to work with. And uh, sushi rice is that same type that is just very, uh, very sticky and very hard to work with. So, I mean, if some people eat their stuff with that, but uh, I personally wouldn't recommend it just because uh, this dish seems, it's like jasmine or basmati rice would probably go best with this dish because it is loose enough, but it's not so sticky that it can, you know, it, it it's loose enough to let the sauce in and that you can eat it with the vegetables and the meat really well, so. Okay, and as you can see also, I'm chopping my vegetables first. Uh, please don't chop your chicken first because then you'll get, your, I mean, you can, but then you have to change cutting boards just for food safety reasons. Because everything's getting cooked, but it's just good practice in case you do have some raw vegetables that are maybe gonna be a garnish on your dish, which is just like a sprinkle on top. Like sometimes people chop parsley on top for a garnish. Um, and then that way you don't have to worry about food safety as much. Okay, so I'm gonna put my shallots in my prep bowl. Okay. <laughs> okay, so then um, now I get to show you garlic. Let's see. So um, there are a lot of tricks for peeling garlic, but mine, um, I'll just show you how I do mine this way. So you can either cut the whole bottom off. I actually don't want to do that because I'm only using a few actually. So, um, so what you want to do is just kind of take off the skin, just kind of pinch it until you see some bulbs exposed and then just start snapping them off. So these are kind of small. This is about the size of clothes you want. This is a really good size. These are a little small. So you're welcome to use them if you want. You just have to use more of them, I would, to make one. Is it 3%? Can you? Oh. <laughs> the laptop's about to die. That's where the recipe is. We don't want that. Okay. So let's see. I'm just gonna mince these four cloves of garlic and I'll show you a really easy way to peel them. So what you can do is very carefully, so there's uh, like the pointy end and then the butt end that's a little flatter and that's where it was attached to the head of garlic. So the whole piece of garlic is called a head and then these little pieces are called cloves. So just get as much skin as you can off of there so it's not so slippery. And then, so like I was saying, very carefully, um, put it on uh, like round side up and then face the, I, I feel like it works better if you face the butt end away from you and then take your knife, tilt it down a little bit so the sharp edge is away from you. Use the heel of your hand and then just press down until it cracks. Okay, so then it's gonna look something like that. And then you can just peel off all the rest of the skin. Some people microwave it to get the skin off and that's because um, it basically steams itself inside of the skin. And that's a really nice way to do it because it just slips off a little bit more easily. And garlic is very sticky, so if some of the skin is sticking, just do your best to get it off. I'm peeling from the butt end because I feel like that works better. <laughs> Can you still see me? Yeah. Okay. And I think it, it helps to have a little towel with you too, so just wipe your hands off whenever you need to because uh, it just makes easier. I usually chop off the butt end, but if you want a little bit more flavor, it's edible. I just like to chop off the butt end. Chop off the butt. <laughs> chop that butt. 
Okay, still got a little skin here. It's a little stubborn one. So like the more you crack it, the easier it is off. So just a pro tip there. Then there we go. Like I said before, just make sure you're in knife of your knife at all times and that you know where it is at all times. If you're it's a lot less work to use a bigger knife, but if you're not comfortable with a big knife, that's totally understandable. You can use a smaller one. Um, just be ready for maybe a little bit more work. So this is a vegetable knife, the one with the flat bottom and kind of like ridges in it. So it's really easy to, it, it's a heavy duty knife that chops vegetables really well. So if you want to use that, then that's great too. So we're going to mince this garlic and the way that you, the easiest way to mince something is just cut it into very thin strips. And it's already kind of mushed because we smashed it anyway, which helps to mince it. So you got it in thin strips and then you want to cut it in a little bit thinner strips. So just kind of lay it out flat like this. And then put your hand, your fingers on top of your knife and then just rock it over the strips to make even thinner strips. If they go sideways, it's okay. We're just, the point is to get it as small as possible. And then just kind of scoop it into a pile and then go crossways like this. Okay. So we're not like Right, so you don't want to do this. You can if you want, it's just very noisy, but it helps if you rock your knife because then it gives you a point of balance and it gives you more control of your knife too. So I'm going to, I'm assuming that this is going to go in with the shallots, so I'm just going to put it at the edge of my cutting board for now. And then just continue to mince this. So what's it like seeing a real-time video? I mean, there's so many that just have everything pre-done and then you're just like, well, of course you did dinner in 10 minutes because you had everything prepped. Yeah, it's funny because this is called 15 minute Thai basil, this recipe, yeah. which is like <laughs> super misleading. It's we're already lie. at 30 minutes and it's like, we're still prepping, you know? <laughs> so that's so, what I was talking about with yeah. maybe it's 15 minutes if you have everything the way it's, it calls for it in the recipe. Like everything is chopped, everything is, because all of this is, all the prep we're doing right now, according to the recipe, should have been done already. So we'll see if it takes us 15 minutes from the time that we um, finish prepping. And also, uh, if you want to put, I for, totally forgot, but if you want to put a timer on your rice, <laughs> it usually <laughs> takes between like 15 and 20 minutes. And when it's done, I'll let you know how you can tell that it's done. You want to say hi to Samantha because this is Samantha's recipe. So yeah. thanks, thanks for suggesting it, Samantha. Shout out. It looks so good. I'm so excited to try it. Yeah, it smells amazing in here already. <laughs> now we have the added garlic to make it smell good in here. Yes. And that's a really good thing to do too. Like if you're trying to sell your house or you're trying to like impress someone that you're dating, just saute up some onions and garlic. And it just smells amazing. They're gonna be like, yeah. what are you cooking in here? Just don't be like in Clueless and leave it in the oven and then burn the house down. <laughs> yeah, don't nearly do that. burn the house down. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're gonna do, I know that the Thai chilies are next, but I'm gonna save them for last because they're spicy and I just wanna, you wanna re reduce the chance of spreading spicy stuff or all over your kitchen as much as possible. So, um, got some shabby basil here. But, um, so you're supposed to use Thai basil. We, uh, here where I live, we couldn't find any. Probably have more luck in LA. <laughs> but um, it's like just like a purplish kind of hardier basil. So the, like the leaves are thicker. It's a little bit shinier. So if you've ever been to a pho place, they usually give you Thai basil to go with it. And I love it because it's purple and you can see my shirt's purple. Obviously I'm a fan. So what you want to do, this is just regular basil, but it should still taste fine. Um, what you want to do is just pull each of the leaves off. And if you want, you can use the stems too. Once again, they're edible, but it's just a preference thing. So I'm just plucking all my leaves off. And some of them are a little bruised. I don't really mind that, but if you're going for looks or if it just looks like it's going bad, then feel free to throw those leaves away. 
And so what I'm doing is just kind of finding a bunch like this and then just pinching it off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be slicing these really thin. So see this leaf is kind of wilted. I'm not gonna use that one, but then I have another leaf over here that's brown but doesn't look wilted, so I'm gonna use that one. So it's just up to your judgment. Okay, so it's asking for a cup of Thai basil, which should be about a bunch. They usually give you a lot in the store. Uh, you can buy a bunch of it and that'll give you a good amount of basil to work with. Got some more brown leaves. They're probably just crushed, which means they'll be flavorful. <laughs> All right. So now the way we're gonna slice our basil is do what's called a roulade. It's a roulade. roulade. It's a French term. It's a French term. So just kind of pile all your leaves up. Big, small, pile them all. And then just start on one end and roll. Just like you're rolling up, I don't know, a burrito, a cigar, whatever. <laughs> uh, and then just, so once again, remember your fingers, just kind of hold it pinched in the middle and then slice from the end really close to each other so you get those nice thin slices. And if your slices are a little thicker, that's okay. It's just uh, the, thin, the more thinly sliced it is, once again, the more um, cells of the plant you'll expose, so the more flavorful it'll be. Okay, so something like that doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be fancy. It's just Wednesday night dinner, okay? And please be careful with your knife. I have a bunch of bad habits because I am skilled with a knife, so don't go running your hands along it like I just did. Um, just if you're gonna wipe your knife off, preferably do it with another tool like this, or just be, make sure that you're at the blunt end and wipe nowhere near the sharp end. Um, all right, so now we're gonna do the Thai chilies. So it says minced or to taste. So I'm not gonna mince these because I like a little bit of spiciness. So if you wanna mince them, just follow the same procedure that you did with the garlic. Um, and it looks a little frightening, so I'm gonna chop that off. Uh, so what you wanna do with Thai chilies is please make sure that after, in the spice zone now, so don't touch your face, don't go to the bathroom, <laughs> don't do anything, don't touch anything that you don't want to burn. So I'm just popping the little tops off like this. And then you see we have a little butt end still. So I'm just gonna do for, like the recipe says for now, because my husband is also gonna be eating this and he does not do spicy. So, um, let's see. So I'm just gonna line up two at a time, but you can do one at a time if you'd like. And then I'm just gonna slice them on a bias like we talked about. Just very thinly, like this. Woo, it smells spicy. <laughs> and if you want to use jalapenos, if you couldn't find Thai bird chilies or they were too expensive or anything like that, um, you could definitely use jalapenos or your favorite pepper. Or if you don't like spicy at all, you can just stick with the bell pepper and maybe just add another color so that it looks a little more colorful. So if you don't like spicy at all, you can always just use a green bell pepper or um, just uh, another pepper that's not as spicy. Um, like, I don't, I'm not sure what to say. I'm just gonna say bell pepper because I feel like some other peppers, I don't think they're spicy, but they are spicy to other people. So I don't wanna mislead you. Okay, so there's that. And then, did I already chop four? Wow, that's fast. <laughs> I think I just subconsciously wanna chop all of them in there. That's what's happening. Um, okay, so now the last thing that we have to do is to cut our chicken. So I'm going to get another bowl to put these aromatics in. And aromatics are the, um, they're usually things like carrots, celery, onions that give your, that are, when you cook them, when you heat them, they smell very fragrant and very good. So um, that's what I'm gonna do with these. Onions are also another aromatic. Shallots are an aromatic. Garlic is an aromatic. So you can see we have, it's gonna be a very fragrant dish. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So you can put them all in the same bowl. It doesn't matter that they're like crossing with each other. No, it's fine. Um, if the best practice is to just um, to look at the recipe and see what's going to be cooked together and put those in the same bowl. Um, but I'm just going to be throwing stuff in. So if you're limited on bowls, then it's totally fine. You might just have some garlic that gets left behind or something, but it's gonna, it's all gonna go in the same dish anyway, so it's all right. Okay, so oh, we need sugar too, let me bring that over. So, okay, we're ready to start. So start the timer, see if this takes 15 minutes. <laughs> Allegedly. So um, heat the oil in a wok or heavy high-walled skillet over high heat. So I'm just gonna use the pan that I have over there. I'm gonna get my tablespoon measure out. So I think, is it two tablespoons? Sounds right. So I'm gonna turn it to high heat. I'm gonna turn my fan on. So I'm going to turn my lower pan on. <laughs> okay, so measure two tablespoons. One. Oops. So you have like a big yeah. heavy pan. If they don't have something like this, do you have any recommendations of what else they can use? Um, you can use a smaller pan and just cut the recipe in half. Um, you can do two batches if you have a smaller pan. Um, if you have a cast iron skillet, if you have a pot, you can use that. The only thing with pots is that the high sides kind of hold the moisture in. So um, it might turn out a little differently, like the vegetables might not be as crisp, but it'll still taste good. Um, you just want to make sure to give it a little extra time to let that moisture evaporate so that it's not soggy. And so that the sauce is the consistency it's supposed to be, because it might be, it's probably gonna, it's supposed to be a little bit of thicker sauce. So I'm going to get my whisk out and then another bowl. <laughs> Once again, if you're low on bowls, um, just you can use cereal bowls or just any kind of plastic bowl. Or um, you can even, what I've done before when I've been low on dishes or, uh, or bowls is to just put all the ingredients that I'm chopping up just straight on the counter, make sure it's clean in little piles. Or you can um, put them on paper towels to like, you know, so you can pick up a paper towel and fold it in. If you have a foldable cutting board, you can do that too. Or you can just use a plate um, to put, to sort out all your prepped items. So um, if you have time on the weekends, I know that's not really the point of this, but <laughs> if you have time on the weekends, you can pre-prep stuff. So if you see a recipe that you want to do, you can plan ahead and then you can like, you know, pre-chop everything and then freeze it or just refrigerate it so it's already ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna take this bowl. Look at our measurements again. Oh, our light. Behind the scenes revealed. <laughs> <laughs> so we got three tablespoons of oyster sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce. And these are brand spanking new. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there we go. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna leave Okay, so two tablespoons. So you have like a little sauce bowl. Yeah, so I have a sauce bowl. So we're gonna do the oyster sauce, soy sauce, fish sauce, and sugar. So all the sauces. We're making the pre-sauce right now. So two, uh, three tablespoons oyster sauce. So. And it is a pro tip or life hack to measure your oil first because um, see how much of that comes out. Normally it would just be coated in there, but since the oil's already in there, it helps the other stuff slide out. Hmm. So um, I like to be quiet <laughs> in life in general. So instead of banging it on the side like this, I bang stuff against my finger. So if you ever see me doing that, it's because I'm trying to trying to lower the noise a little. Um, <laughs> but if you are comfortable with it, you just bang it right on the side to get all of it out. Um, so then we're doing two tablespoons of soy sauce. Okay, I'm doing a low sodium. You can do full sodium if you'd like. It's up to you. 
Um, but I just have a pretty low salt tolerance. So um, if you like a lot of salt, use the full. If you don't like a lot of salt, then you can use the low sodium. And what I do, I'm not gonna do it right now, but what I like to do is just put things away as I go to clear my workspace, because you never wanna have your workspace be too chaotic. Mine's a little chaotic for my taste right now, but um, as long as you can get to everything and you know where everything is, then it should be fine. Let me see. So um, I'm gonna take basil over here. And then the fish sauce is next. So two tablespoons of that. Oh. So all these are brand new, but ideally they would be open already. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to eat the sugar. Okay, I turned my skillet off because it's already really hot, so um, please check your skillet, make sure it's not smoking everywhere. Okay, so uh, I use the sugar for other things, so I'm not going to dip into it because there's sauce on it, so I'm just going to pour it in here, and it's two, three tablespoons of sugar. So one, two, and three. And I'm going a little light on the sugar just because I don't like things super sweet either, but um, they should be level scoops of sugar. Okay. So, oh, and then the fish sauce, we're gonna go back to, I wanna thank our producer for that. Uh, so two tablespoons of the fish sauce. Yes, okay. Normally you don't use fish sauce in very large amounts, which is why the opening is so small. So I'm just gonna take the top off and let her rip if I can. It's not, it won't come off. Okay, so we're gonna <laughs> do it the way. Do it the way God intended. The way God intended. <laughs> okay. Lovely. I love fish sauce, but it doesn't always smell the best, so don't be surprised. <laughs> Smells like feet. Smells like, yeah, not even like fish. So two tablespoons, it luckily. Tastes great. Yeah, it tastes great. It's really good with spring rolls and uh, egg rolls, too. All right, so now we're going to take our whisk. If you don't have a whisk, just use a fork. Works just as well. And then just stir it around. Just want to make sure that the sugar is at least partially dissolved and that everything is incorporated. I smell that fish sauce. I don't know about you. Ooh. Okay, so that's good. All right, so now that our pan is hot. Oh, you know what? We didn't chop our chicken. Let's do that. Sorry guys, I forgot about that. Okay, so um, if your chicken has some uh, fat on it, I just like to remove any excess fat, but you don't have to at all. Um, but if you want to, I just kind of pull it away and then drag the knife across it like this. And you want a little, you don't want, all the fat gone because the fat is moisture and flavor. Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. So um, we're going to chop this up. Okay, so stop the clock because this would normally be done before the 15 minutes. <laughs> okay, chop this. And then chopping these is pretty easy because there's no rhyme or reason to it. You can just kind of coarsely chop them however you like, just so that once again, there's more surface area, which gives us more flavor. Is there a, like a benefit or disadvantage to use? Because these are thighs that we mm -hmm. have. So if somebody has just breasts or maybe wings or drumsticks, like is, there, is that okay? What do you recommend? Um, that's okay. The, so the breasts are gonna be a little bit more dry um, they're going to be a little bit um, less fat, 
So some people prefer that, but um, the, the thighs get really juicy because they're dark meat and um, they're usually a little bit fattier um, and it's a little bit more um, oxygenated muscle. So it's got a little more flavor in it. So um, that's what the dark meat is. It's, is it just means that there's more um, blood flow to that muscle. Mm. So, uh, you know, got to talk about that part because we're, <laughs> you know, uh, you want to see, you want to know where your food comes from. I'm mm -hmm. a big believer in that. So, um, yeah, the, the muscle, the, because they walk around on their legs. They don't, you know, their breasts are just kind of there, you know. Um, they help them flap their wings and things like that, but they're just a less used muscle. So the more used muscles are just going to be more moist. So I'm um, just kind of dicing these into like cubes and I'm just putting it back in the container that it came in. Um, take this stuff out, put it in my trash. And so I just have a container here, but you can put them in a bowl, on a plate. One less dish to wash. Yeah, there you go. So I just am kind of laying it flat. Um, Cause they take, these are boneless thighs. So if you have bone in thighs, um, I would, just be careful chopping them so that you're not chopping into the bone. I, if they're bone, if they're bone in thighs, I would just go ahead and leave them whole. Um, but these are boneless, so you can just kind of uh, lay them. They basically cut the bone out, like I said. So just lay them flat and cut them into like one inch chunks. Be mindful of your fingers. Feel something weird there? I'm gonna cut that out. <laughs> So if you feel anything that feels like bone or something, cut off the weird stuff. Just cut it, yeah. Cut it out of there. Cut it out of your life. Cut it out. So once again, I'm folding this flat. And then there are little pieces in the package that just kind of naturally come off. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Cut this. I put on our Instagram a little quiz Ooh. and asked folks what this was. <laughs> the choices were red onion, pink onion, giant garlic, or the correct <laughs> answer, which is shallot. Of course, you'd know if you're watching this with us. <laughs> and I'm happy to report that nearly half got it right. <laughs> So we have much more to teach these folks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's so much to learn. So, so much to teach is a good thing. I but is it ever I'm too late to learn more about cooking? <laughs> no. No. Never. I mean, I still learn more about cooking and I went to culinary school. So there's just, I mean, there's all these new techniques now that the kids are doing. The like, kids. <laughs> like sous, sous vide was around when I oh, was yeah. in culinary school, but not to the not as prevalent as it is today. It's just all over the place. And basically what it is, is um, you basically simmer something under like warm water that's at a specific temperature and um, it cooks it gently. So it's really good for eggs and meat and stuff like that. Okay, so if that's going in the trash, I don't have a use for that. If you do, great. Um, so then let's see. Now we're ready to rock and roll. So add the bell pepper and green beans to the hot wok. Let's see, just making sure. Okay. So this is still hot. Turn it back on. And okay, so green beans. So these are being cooked first because they need to cook the most. So this is like uh, we were talking about earlier. <laughs> it's a lot easier if you separate everything by the steps that it's cooked in. So luckily these are big, so I'm able to kind of uh, pick them out. 
But if you're going to prepare a little better, and we will be a little bit better prepared next time, then I will know which bowls to separate them into. You're using um, vegetable oil. Yes. Is there any other oils you can use or shouldn't use? What do you recommend? Um, I wouldn't use olive oil because it's not meant, a lot of people use it for regular cooking, but it's not really meant to be used at high temperatures. It's actually meant to be eaten cold. Um, and so people use it in spaghetti sauce and things like that, but as far as, because it's just a few tablespoons, but as far as a cooking oil, it's not really, um, not really the best. So uh, there's a whole thing about the types of oils and what they, um, like their smoke points, which means the point that they start to burn. And uh, so olive oil has a really low smoke point. So that means that when it starts to burn, it starts to create carcinogens and it's not good for you. So um, this oil is good, vegetable oil. So this is a blend. It'll tell you what it's a blend of on the back. So this is just straight soybean oil. But sometimes vegetable oil is corn oil, peanut oil, soy oil, so, or I mean soybean oil. So if you are allergic to peanuts, please make sure and check your oil because it could be peanut oil. They consider that a vegetable oil. Um, usually they've gotten a lot, of, a lot better. It's usually just in blends. But they've gotten a lot better about labeling um, peanut oil since so many people are allergic to it. Um, so I would recommend grapeseed oil because that has the highest smoke point. So um, that's a really good one. And then just canola oil is good as well. Uh, so I'm going to turn this down a little bit. It's getting intense. I'm going to check my rice actually while this is cooking. So the way I check my rice is I just um, tilt it. And if I can't see any water pulling here, then it's probably done. And the test for that is I just take a fork and I fluff it. And I fluff it to the bottom. And you can see there's like no moisture there. Well, it's, I mean, it's moist, but there's no water there. So it's done. So I'm going to pull it off. And the lid on so it stays warm until we're done cooking. You can take your spatula, you can also use a wooden spoon. Uh, you can use tongs. Um, so this says to stir fry it. Okay. I'm going to go check my directions. So we're stir frying that for about one minute. I think that's about a minute. So now we're going to add the chicken and stir fry it, dump it in there. I usually make a little hole in the middle and put the newly cooked item in there, or newly, newly added item that we're cooking. So in stir frying, you usually want to move stuff around a lot, but just make sure you're not moving it around too much, so not constantly, just often, if that makes sense. So it'll start to turn white or like yellowish, the chicken, and that means it's cooking. So just make sure that you're moving everything because you don't want your vegetables to be overcooked. You still want them a little crispy, but you do want your chicken cooked thoroughly. If you see the tossing, the motion that I'm doing is kind of like a scoop and toss. So I kind of scoop in the middle, toss it to the side, rotate, scoop in the middle, toss it to the side. and then kind of push everything back. Kind of a stirring motion. Okay. And then I'm gonna shake your pan a little bit. Don't do it if it's cast iron, because it's not good for the cast iron, it's so heavy, it'll kind of scrape the bottom of the pan and mess up your stove. But a saute pan like this is fine, or a skillet. So we're going to leave that there. And it says until beginning to brown, about two minutes. So well, this is where the 15 minute part comes in. Yeah. <laughs> Putting things in the pan is when the clock starts, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe a little misleading, but I think we might probably be under an hour and a half for a total, like, yeah. Prep to, to mealtime. 
And stir fries are really quick, so if you just chop the vegetables and just have like pre-minced garlic, you can buy that in the store. Um, you can buy chopped stuff at the store, but it's kind of expensive, more expensive. Um, and I mean, I was talking a lot, so if I wasn't talking, it would probably take me less time to do this. So I like to factor this in because maybe you're watching a show, maybe you're listening to a Zoom lecture. <laughs> Don't do that, that's not advisable, but uh, like while you're multitasking, you know, cooking and being educated. But, uh, you know, maybe you're doing something else, uh, talking to your roommate, watching a movie, downloading your day to your friends or family or roommates. Um, so then it, it kind of mimics the actual time it takes as opposed to if you're just by yourself, like rushing to do it. Um, so that looks about good. So next, we're gonna stir in the shallots, garlic, and the Thai chilies. So here are the shallots. Garlic and Thai chilies. Mm. I'm so hungry. Me too. <laughs> so we see some of our basil friends are getting in there. Um, Look how colorful that is. But it's okay. Yeah, beautiful. And you know the more colorful things are, the more nutrients they have. So that's why it's good to eat colorful food. Unless it's like Skittles, then <laughs> it doesn't apply. <laughs> that doesn't count. How about like those rainbow sour belts? Um, almost, but no. <laughs> no? No. Sometimes they're made with real fruit, but most often not. <laughs> All right. I think my husband's gonna die because I think that's gonna be pretty spicy, but that's okay. Let's give him lots of rice. <laughs> so then we're gonna stir this in. You can see all the moisture coming off of the chicken. That's all the fat kind of melting and it's mixing with the olive oil. What? <laughs> Did I say olive oil? Yeah. Vegetable oil, sorry. <laughs> Okay, mm. so then just kind of, the reason I shake it like this too is to make sure it's nice and even. So the shaking motion kind of settles everything so it's in a layer so it cooks more evenly. Okay, so it says cook until fragrant, about a minute. And then, uh, so that'll be just enough time for me to go get the sauce and pour it in, which is what we're doing next. So just get that mixture that you whisk together And by now it's probably settled a little bit, so the sugar is probably like dissolving at the bottom. So I just give it a little bit of a stir with, uh, you can either whisk it or you can stir it with the spatula or spoon or whatever you're using. In a pinch, you can even, for your cooking utensil, you can even just use like a spoon that you would use for cereal or anything. Just make sure it's whatever you're using is safe to use in a hot pan. So then we're gonna pour that over the top. And this is why I like to use a spatula because you can get every last little good bit out of there. Uh, if you don't, if you're not using a spatula, you can always just use a little bit of water to rinse it out. Just uh, like a couple tablespoons, I'll show you right now, um, because there is a lot of evaporation happening here. So your sauce won't be too runny, but you'll still get the good flavor. I literally just turn my faucet on and off. So it's about that much water and then just kind of swish it around and then pour it in there. And as the sauce thickens and as everything evaporates, or sorry, as, as everything evaporates, the sauce will thicken. So just kind of toss it in that. I'm going to try to heat up because we need business and we're hungry. <laughs> Mmm. I wish you guys could smell it. It's so good. Mm. 
Yeah, and so it says just to cook it, uh, let it simmer until it's, uh, the sauce is thickened a little bit and it starts to coat the chicken. So please make sure that your chicken is cooked through. <laughs> uh, it says one to two minutes, but I don't know how accurate that is. I think it should be more like four to five minutes, depending on how hot your stove is. That's the whole thing is if your stove is really powerful, like mine might reduce a little bit faster, but if your sauce is still watery and your chicken still looks pink, then you're going to want to cook it a little bit longer. Um, fish sauce is starting to come out. <laughs> Smells like feet in here. <laughs> so what are you, why are you doing that? So I'm just kind of trying to bury the uh, chicken because everything else can be eaten the way it is, but the chicken, we just want to make sure that number one, it stays nice and moist, and number two, so that it cooks all the way. So it's under the simmering sauce. And then I like to leave it like that for a little while just to make sure that it's cooking a little bit. But if you'd rather just kind of keep consistently tossing it more like stir fry style, then that's fine too. So we save the basil till the very end. And so what we're gonna do with that is as soon as it's done cooking, or as soon as it's, you know, like the sauce is cooked to our satisfaction, then we're going to um, just throw it in there, just toss it until the basil is wilted, which should be less than 30 seconds. And then just, we can turn the stove off and then plate it. So I'm gonna get a plate and plate my rice while I'm waiting for this to finish. And if you have a rice paddle for your rice cooker, that works. If you just have a fork, that works too. I like to use a spoon, um, but I like to fluff my rice with a fork first. So fluffing your rice, basically you just kind of scrape along the top of it like this, so it gets nice and fluffy, and just kind of volumizes it a little bit. But you don't have to do that. You can just scoop it out the way it is, and that's fine too. I just like this because it separates it a little bit, so the sauce has uh, room to go to soak through there a little bit more. So I like to do probably about a cup of rice, but feel free to do more than that. And then I'm going to set this aside. So this is looking really good. I'm just going to toss it again. And then I think we're pretty much ready to add the basil. I reduced down a lot. Yeah, so you see how the sauce is thicker and there's less of it. So I'm just gonna push it down again so you can see the comparison. There's barely any sauce to kind of push it into because it's all nice and thick and it's coating everything, which is great. So here is my basil. Just toss it in there. I'm just gonna scrape this with my fingers. And you really don't have to get every last bit. That's just kind of like a habit of mine. <laughs> get every last little fleck of everything out of there. So um, you can just kind of spread it out over the top so it mixes in a little bit better and then fold. So scoop it up, toss it over, rotate, scoop it up, toss it over, rotate. And then I scoop it back, toss it over. The sauce looks so great. And then you can just kind of stir it around so that there's basil everywhere. And then the basil is already pretty wilted. So you can see some, let's see, I'm trying to get this piece like right here. So it looks dark and sad, <laughs> but it tastes great. I promise you it's not sad. It's glad to be wilted because that means that it's just like adding its flavor to this dish. And you can actually turn off the stove before you add the basil because it'll, the heat, the residual heat will be plenty of heat to wilt it. I just like to cook my basil down a little bit. So it's up to you. That instantly made it smell so, so amazing. Yeah. Like magic. So now you can see our sauce is a little bit thicker, like magic. 
and then I'm just going to scoop this out. So I'm going to get a big spoon, but you can use your little spoon or just whatever you have on hand. And I'm going to just take a nice little scoop of it. Oh, who am I kidding? Nice big scoop. Whoops. <laughs> Not too eager. And then just kind of set it on top of the, of the rice. Beautiful. And then I usually scoop a little sauce out of there and pour it on top. And there you go. Dinner! Dinner! Dinner. Hey, so do I taste it? Yeah. It's like, have you seen those uh, commercials for those uh, food delivery? Oh, yeah. <laughs> where they, they make it and they're like, mm, it's so good. This is really hot, so. Oh, yeah. Got that fish sauce. That's amazing. Soy sauce. Yeah. Mm. You got your peppers, your vegetables. Might have a little bit of a crunch to them still. And yeah, so you can cook the vegetables to your liking. Um, some people don't like them cooked very much, so you can reduce that time to like 30 seconds in the beginning to stir fry them because they are going to cook a lot in the sauce. Um, but yeah, they should still be pretty crispy, but then if you like them cooked all the way through, you like them soft, then you can just do it the way I did it. So if you have any questions about this episode or about cooking in general, um, you can visit us, uh, on Instagram, uh, at Cal State LA Library, <laughs> and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye! Thank you!